you seen a code before, right? Um, so, do you think we have Kyoto Protocol work? We think the Kyoto Protocol was absolutely the right step to take in 1997. We think the reason that the Kyoto Protocol failed is because the US told people it was too expensive to sign the Kyoto Protocol and that's it precedent. We think the Kyoto Protocol hasn't worked because the US told everybody it was too expensive to sign the Kyoto Protocol, otherwise it would have worked. So European countries who actually are following, who managed to meet their targets, it's still not enough. We think that those European countries are leading the way on climate change, but we think that because the US refused to sign the Kyoto Protocol, the EU, the actions okay. of the EU aren't enough for That's it. what I'm not asking. I'm asking, has it made any difference to climate change? Absolutely. The EU's reduction in standards did make a difference for European climate change, but the US is still emitting a lot of carbon. Okay, does the state have the right or the, or the obligation to protect citizens' interests? Yeah, absolutely, and we'd expect a state to look at all of the citizens' interests, its economic interests, its environmental interests, and its social interests. Great. Do you think the states are equal? Yes, we think all states. Do you think states should have an equal uh, burden in international relations? No, we think that states who create international problems have an additional responsibility to deal with those international problems. Okay, if, if China says that their excuse was that the US did not sign, do you think that is true? Yeah, we think that China said that they didn't have to do much about climate so change. So every use China, or excuses China usually uses are very true. Are you pardon? Like, if China uses an excuse, is it usually a good one? Let's just ask this. You as an international relations student should know, right? So we're just saying, well, we're doing good stuff in Tibet because we need to. Is that true? Mm -hmm. We think that there's a fundamental difference between China saying we're abusing human rights because we think it's necessary for national security and China saying the US said that they're not willing to accept the economic burden of dealing with climate change so why should we as a nation that's still dealing with poverty? Okay, so when they are right and when they aren't, right? Okay, yeah, that's important. So we're just saying, what is the European economy or the European Union economy based on? Is it like car service production, cute environmental stuff? Yes. Okay, is US based on, for example, a bit more dirty industry? Uh, not necessarily. I think the US could find ways to produce their major industries by using things like wind power, solar power, or hydroelectric mm -hmm. power. Okay. Then you spoke about um, sharing evidence and how Kyoto actually mandated it. Do you think we could have shared evidence without Kyoto? We could have, but we didn't, and we think that's very important. Okay, so basically, could you also tell me, is the US right now losing the way in the environmental change, as we just said? You're yeah. That. yeah, no, I'm Copenhagen. So could you perhaps say that the US was not bad in saying that the environmental, we don't care about the environment, but they were just saying, well, we think Kyoto is bad? No, because the US set the environmental movement back 12 years, and in those 12 years, nation states like Tuvalu suffered enormously, and we think that's really important. So do you think the US has to basically save the world? <laughs> We're not asking the US to save the world, we're asking the US to do its bit in conjunction with every other nation in the world, except their responsibility, Sorry. but not China and Brazil. Okay, thank you. We are now set back uh, in, our, in our fight against climate change and also that the United States has a special addition burden because they are the global leader. Both of those two things we agree, we, we, we strongly disagree with. We think she hasn't contradicted, hasn't um, shown why what Spella said in her speech was wrong, the fact that there wasn't full consensus at that point. The things that she brings up now are things that, that weren't that clear at then. And even at that point in 1995, 1994, most, uh, there was pretty much down the line in the middle disagreement about what, where these, these exact causes are. And we think it's a little bit far-fetched to blame things like the tsunami, which are due to global plates under the ground moving on global change. So we think that's the sort of sense that's, uh, that's on the side of the negative. The sense of paranoia that everything's going wrong and then blaming it on the and the United States of America. We think now that Obama's come abroad and the U.S. agree with Copenhagen, it's not necessarily an admission that they made a mistake in the past, but a recognition of how things have moved across now. And we say, if unless they want to show that Copenhagen and Kyoto were exactly the same, then we can say that, that, that 
that is an admission of, of failure or regret. But we think Copenhagen and Kyoto are immensely different programs, and therefore an, 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 an agreement or recognition that this is something that's completely new. And until they come up and tell those things, we have we are we pretty much clear ahead in this debate. Now, what is Spell do? She talked about three things. So first, it's the nature of Kyoto, um, how it's unfair, the nature of the U.S. And I'm going to respond to things that that Claudia said about that. She spent most of her speech talking about that. Firstly, she said, no, it's not. No international treaty is perfect, and we said we agree, and we, we're glad that she admits it isn't perfect, and we said because it isn't perfect, it's difficult to make it binding upon people and, and have economic consequences, and we think that's, that's a point. She said that, well, it didn't lead to mandates to, to research and stuff like that, but she basically agreed in a cross-examination that research is still possible. You don't need to have cooperative research because of Kyoto, and we think that's a moot point. Secondly, this notion of it being unfair, so if, that it wasn't binding on all people, she said, well, these are countries that are not industrialized. Two things are that. We think Israel and South Korea are pretty industrialized, yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, and I think we can be hard pressed to show how these countries are not industrialized. But then she said, you know, they're not industrialized, therefore they should be allowed to industrialize first. And we think this is a contradiction. For so in, in her process, examination, said, asked um, Speller, even if it's not better for countries to, to, to adopt green technology before they start industrializing. And if that's the case, then the priority of Kyoto should have been to make countries to move on to green technology before they adopted dirty technology, and which, which is the situation with the United States, of, United States of America. She also went on to say, well, the different priorities. China and India are worried about lots of poor people, and we don't see why the United States shouldn't be worried about lots of poor people or people losing jobs. We think on, on balance, those things are equal. Finally, she said that the United States of America should leave. And, and because they didn't do that, so many people you know, got all these excuses, and that's, that was problematic. We think that's a very hypocritical stance. The US is a very convenient excuse to blame whenever something doesn't go through. At points when they are leading, when they want to take a step too far in, in democracy and human rights, people raise their hands up and say, oh, no, that's not fair because we've got other priorities. But when they have other priorities in a different issue, suddenly it's fair. We don't think, unless they can show these things are completely different, why it's fair to hold the United States up to this in incredibly unfair standard on one level, but not to, uh, to the standard on the other level. And secondly, on this whole notion of interest of U.S., which we think is a huge point in this, in this debate, she said, well, it's only a very small reduction. It's just 5%. In that case, I would like to the second speaker to tell me all these vast other countries that made this very small reduction, because we don't think many countries have. Some countries that were on a very easy position to reach that, like, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the nice, friendly European countries, uh, they have, but the vast majority of countries have with countries like Australia, which per capita pollutes more than any other country in the world. Then she said, well, the economy suffers more in the long term. And we might perhaps agree with that, but, it, but it, we still think it's contentious. But even then, we think the United States of America has then an interest to balance their short-term economic losses against long-term improvements. And we think that's the position the United States of America has taken. They haven't taken a complete rejection of this policy. We're not going to stand up here and say George Bush is absolutely correct. We, we're, going to discuss, we're going to defend the great the scientific population in the U.S. that says, you know, while they might, we have to be cautious about this approach, it, it doesn't benefit us to, to create a huge economy backlash while we're trying to push through this, this, this policy. What we need, and what I think everybody will concede, is that we need the involvement of the people who are involved in, 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 in this pollution, which is the industries, which is the, which is the big businesses, and the way to get that is through consensus, is, is through um, engagement, and we think through all those things the U.S. has managed to take a good position. So in summary, ladies and gentlemen, what we've shown you in, on affirmative is that given the nature of, of Kyoto and given the high burdens placed upon the U.S., it was entirely justified for the U.S. to back off. And, and given that, they also led to, we believe, an improvement in the policy. And that's the end.